Hello again. Welcome to Jack Rabbit Journal. North Dakota State is still a really good football team. Four-time defending national champions. The Bison beat the Jackrabbits 28-7 in the Dakota Markers showdown. South Dakota State still 3-1 on the season, Hank. They got to move on. Are you over this one yet? I think that I am. Uh, those guys certainly should be. They needed to forget that one as soon as they absolutely could. Uh, really an unfortunate football game, Tom. You know, it, everybody was fired up, ready to go. The Bison were ready to go. The 17,000, the largest crowd in the history of Coughlin Alumni Stadium, was ready to go. But the boys in blue were not, obviously. And uh, they missed an opportunity. But that's okay, because there are plenty of others coming up. It's a young season, and these guys got a lot of work to do. Do you remember being in that situation, though? Outwardly, you're saying all the right things, and outwardly, you're confident and you're ready to go, but the just inside, there's, there's a little bit of doubt there. Is that the way it was, you think, for the players? Well, maybe. Uh, hopefully not doubt, because these guys know that they're good football players. They know that they're, they're a solid team. Um, but what they don't know is what happened last week, perhaps, other than, you know, it's tough to explain, other than they just weren't ready to play a, a big football game last week. So right now what they got to do, they got to look themselves in the mirror and try to figure out, you know, how are we going to respond to this? There's, there's two ways we can go about it. We can feel sorry for ourselves and, and uh, you know, slough through the rest of the season, or we can get angry and use that anger to fuel uh, their efforts moving forward. And let's remember last year in the regular season, North Dakota State beat the Jacks by 20. And then it was uh, the Jacks had them in the playoffs uh, once the FCS playoffs got going. So there is uh, there is definitely hope. And let's take a look at uh, this ball game. The Jacks' first play of the game against the Bison was a completion to Cam Jones for 13 yards. That was the longest play, though, of the first half for South Dakota State. The Rabbits run it eight times in the first half for eight yards. NDSU converts on six of eight third downs in the first half. They convert on 11 of 16 in the game, and the Jacks defense was on the field for just under 40 minutes out of a total 60 in this game. It's 21 to nothing, Bison at halftime. Jacks turned the Bison over twice in the second half, including a sweet little strip and recovery by Jerian Butler, and the offense gets going a little bit late in the game. A couple of catches by Dallas Goddard. He was one of the few bright spots in this game for the Jacks, and uh, we will talk about the first half with Coach Stiegelmeyer when we come back on Jack Rabbit Journal. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. All right, let's get to the first half of this game against North Dakota State. Coach Stiglmeyer loved the atmosphere, uh, loved the crowd, uh, just did not love a whole lot how his team came out and played in the first half. Well, it started really special. I mean, the tailgating, the, the energy, the the stands were full, first sellout ever at Coughlin Alumni and more people than ever. And we needed to do our part and we didn't. Did you did your guys have the confidence and the, the swagger and those things you hear about? Did they have the belief that they could win uh, this game going into the game? Well, on the outside we did, uh, but uh, you know, I, all you hear is what I say. You don't know what's in my heart. I don't know what's in their heart. And I can watch them practice and do all the things we do during the week. And I believe that uh, we believed. All right, let's get into the first half here. And again, great crowd. The students show up as usual. And this is your first possession. You find Cam Jones right away for a nice game. Yeah, we got it. We got, you know, the initial play was a run and we didn't get it done. And so we go to the pass. And now we just got to string together some plays. And, and uh, this is an example. I mean, the guy runs through backside, gets a hand on him. They hold the line of scrimmage. And kind of, that's our base play and didn't get it done. And that just not getting it done. Good job on defense here by uh, Kreitzfeldt and, and Langer. Uh, uh, again, that's not their base play. Their base play is power. And they, you got them into third down quite a bit in this first half, but they converted quite a bit as well. Too often. We play soft coverage there. Uh, he kind of pushes off, gets the first down. This is tough to stop a power team down here. You know, you got to get a lot of bodies there. Uh, and you got to get your pads underneath them. You can't lose the line of scrimmage because he's going to hit you full speed at the goal line. Uh, we, we didn't get it done on that play. All right, seven nothing Bison midway through the first quarter here, and then on the kickoff, this is going to get fumbled out of bounds at about the four yard line. Yeah, this is just a lack of focus and uh, worried about the sidelines. If you're worried about the sidelines, uh, take a peek, let it bounce, do whatever. You know that, that tough, good kick on their part, really good kick on their part. And we knew that they could do that. Uh, Trevor just needs to handle the ball. Get backed up again, and third down, they, they start coming, and you got into third and long way too often. Right? Way too often. Third and long is advantage defense, whoever you're playing. And our guard needed to come off on the nose guard, and he didn't do it. Good good play here by uh, uh, Jimmy Forsyth. Really good play. On a third down there for the Bison, so uh, get the football back, but um, give it right back to him as well, and 
on the ground here. They used a lot of different running backs. Was that any issue at all? No, no, that's their plan. You can see our DN uh, think he's supposed to bounce the play. They go right by him. So we had an unblocked player there. He just needed to have his eyes open and make the tackle. Good job by uh, our defensive back running him down and preventing a huge yard. All right, seven nothing going to the second quarter, and this is third and fifteen here. This this is tough. I mean, this is good execution. We do this uh, also. I mean, you gotta you gotta give credit where credit's due, and that's great throw, great catch. I mean, anytime you gotta lay out and catch the ball, uh, how do you defend that? So give him some credit, but but he's not in the end zone yet. Keep him out of the end zone. And then more locked. We'll take it in here, right up the middle. Yeah. Again, look at the line of scrimmage. Uh, already we're discouraged. Already we've lost some confidence. Uh, you know, or we we rekindled disbelief if we had that. And that, that becomes a tough uh, uh, spirit to, to quench. All right, still just 14-0. Well played here by Mears and the guys. Yeah, you can't play the bubble screen any better than that. Uh, aggressive, uh, Jimmy Forsythe does his job on the outside. Uh, tremendous job. Third down again, third and three. Again, tough to stop, 235 pounds. He's six foot six. He's going he's gonna to get that. We're in the right spot. We're in the right defense. It's just it's going to be tough to stop that unless you have two guys there. And they find the tight end coming over the middle. This, this is disappointing. That's a blown coverage. That is flat out a, a guy not paying attention or doing what he's supposed to be doing. And, uh, and consequently, that should have been double covered in our deal, in our, in, our, in our scheme. And then they run that power so often, and then they sneak the, the tight end out here for a touchdown. Yeah, and again, we're playing a lack of focus, lack of confidence, uh, not even close to our potential right now. I mean, cover the guy, make him make the play, and uh, we didn't, didn't do it. All the things that you did well in practice, you didn't do in the first half of the game here. Is that what you're saying? When, 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 when as an athlete, you're an athlete, as an athlete, you have to be mentally, mentally tough when things aren't going as planned against a, a really good football team, basketball team, it doesn't matter, to refocus every time. We call it playing the present. And it, you know, you take that pass to the tight end. Had we double covered that, maybe he throws it inside to the free guy and we intercepted, whole different football game potentially. But but we, we weren't playing football like that. All right, so in the locker room, you talking X's and O's or is it more the mental state of your team at that time? Yeah, more mental mental state. The, the coordinators do the X's and O's. I went around to the offensive linemen and asked them one-on-one, -on -one, can you block them? Can you block them? Can you get it done? And they believed they could. And uh, we, did, we did a better job in the second half, but not a great job. Defensively, I just said, fit the plays. All right? These are all plays that we've practiced. Just fit the plays. Make them march the field. All right, 21 nothing down to these guys is like being down twice that much to a lot of teams. This, this is just a team you do not want to get behind against. No, it's not. Four-time defending national champs, they know how to close out games. 21-point lead, heck, if it was a 10-point lead, they would feel confident about their ability to close this one out. Um, you've got a, you got a lot of work ahead of you against the Bison being down 21 nothing. Yeah, they did play a little better in the second half. They had a hard time getting the ball to Jake Winicky in this game, but tight end Dallas Goddard made a couple of big plays. We'll go through the second half with Coach Stigemeyer coming up. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to Jack Journal. We'll get to the second half with Stig coming up. Uh, can you twist this at all into a positive that the Jacks played terrible in the first half and make that into any kind of positive? Say that, you know, we know we played horrible. The next time we see these guys, we're going to play better. Am I, am I reaching there? No, I don't think you're reaching. Um, uh, there were they, they played better in the second half, yes. But I think the biggest positive you can take away from it is that they didn't quit. And, uh, you know, had this score ended up 57-7, uh, to seven, uh, yeah. we'd, I'd be singing a different tune. But they didn't quit. Uh, they kept going hard. Um, having already been taken out of the game really uh, emotionally, uh, they didn't give up. All right. Things did turn a bit for the better in the second half for the Jacks. Here's Coach Dig. We played a little better defense. Uh, we moved the ball. We decided that we're going to have to throw the ball more than, than, than we thought we were going to have to. I mean, this is a fickle game. I mean, they're going to stop us on the one-yard line. We're going to have another touchdown call back because of a, a, a penalty. You know, who knows in a football game like this? A close football game is one or two plays. We never were ready for those one or two plays. We messed them up. All right, let's get into the second half here. And Jesse Bobbitt has had a great season so far, and he makes another play here. He had another very good game. Yeah, Jesse's a good football player. It means a ton to him. He prepares, works as hard as anybody I've ever been around. Uh, he's a good football player. So we force him to punt, and they down it on the one-yard line and then can't get off the goal line here. That, you know, that happens. You're going to down the ball the one-yard line. But again, that guy's blocked. Block him. Stay on your block and let Brady at least get to the two-yard line. Turns into a short field for them after they down that punt at the one and then Wentz 
those 27 yards? Well, it's a, it's a real short punt, and then it bounced backwards for them. And uh, that's and, and Coach Brown was the first guy to say it, that in the chess game of football, they had the right call against our defense. And uh, somebody had to be Superman, and there weren't any guys out there doing that at that play. All right, 28 nothing the score here. And then this is a beautifully executed play to Cam Jones. Yeah, again, if you can run the ball, which we weren't doing a great job of, play-action pass is good. That was simply play-action pass. Great design by our offense. Uh, get, get the ball moving. And then a big running thing here for Isaac Wallace. Yeah, again, a little bit of trickery here. They get out of position, and, uh, and we didn't have to block a guy because there was nobody in that gap. And so Isaac gets... Uh, five, six, eight yards before he even gets touched. And here's the play you're talking about, get stopped at the one. Yeah, now watch, follow him in the end zone. Follow, look at the outside here, They're right there. There's, there's blockers blocking, they follow him in the end zone. And uh, just uh, a panic, a young guy, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately. All right, you made a couple of big plays defensively in the second half, forced some turnovers. This is a phenomenal play by Jerian Butler at the end. Yeah, yeah, he'd never give up, never give up, and he, he literally strips the ball as he takes him down, literally takes it out of his hands. That's a heck of a football play. Jerian's known for that. He's a good football player. All right, then you get a drive going here. Kyle Paris comes in at running back, and Lujan will find him for a big game. Yeah, well, Kyle was in there uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, we've been offsides as running backs uh, three times in the football game. Another reason for lack of focus or example of lack of focus. Good. Kyle's a good player, and he keeps playing hard and practicing hard. And then on a third and 14 here, Dallas Goddard will get 12 yards. Yeah, Dallas, uh, well, our whole tight end core. Uh, uh, Dallas and Cam had a good game. Again, they pressed you guys outside, and so they say you can't throw to them, so uh, good coaches will find a way to throw it. A nice play here. Great throw, great catch by uh, Dallas. I'm not sure I like the ball out like that, but uh, we'll take a touchdown. He's he's ferocious when he gets the football. And is Dallas Goddard a, a tight end or a wide receiver? What is he? Well, he's uh, the, in the NFL, and he's not an NFL player right now. But in the NFL, they call him hybrids, and a guy that can block like a tight end, uh, line up in the tight end position, yet go out and scare guys that are defensive backs. That's the kind of guy uh, Dallas is. All right, we didn't see Jake Winicky in all of these highlights. He had three catches. What was going on there? Press man, uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of holding, a lot, a lot of interference. Uh, but that's that's their game, and either you got to find a way to get him off uh, that, motion him, you know, get him off the line of scrimmage, or go to somebody else. We did. We went to the tight ends. And you got to have time to throw. You got to have time for your wide receivers Without to get open doubt. as well, right? Without a doubt. G great point. I mean, uh, you know, when it is second and ten, it's advantage defense. Third and long, it's advantage defense. And we had way too many of those because we couldn't get the uh, four yards, five yards on, on the first down. Didn't get it. I shouldn't say we couldn't get it. And so the, the, it was it was tough. And, and Zach had a, a good game, but he got beat up in the game. Yeah, he got knocked around quite a bit. Is he okay? He is. Yeah, he's a winner. Uh, I would say his body hurts, his spirit hurts more because he cares so much about the Jackrabbits and leading this team to a higher level. All right, and we didn't see the touchdown you talked about. Uh, Lujan to Trevor Wesley in the second half there. It was a beautiful play, but it gets called back because of a penalty. It was just that kind of night, wasn't it? Well, again, you make it that kind of night sometimes. There's, there's no bad luck unless, you know, ricochets here, 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 you know, uh, uh, flat out. We're in two minute. You got to be focused. We practice this every week. We practice it all fall camp. Get on, get on the line of scrimmage. It should be a set deal. And we had everybody was off the line of scrimmage. So we're illegal formation. Can you almost call it a positive that you played poorly? Is that, am I stretching there or well, is it? Uh, if we don't lose confidence, right. if, if we come back this week and believe in ourselves and know that we can, we can be where we want to be at the end of the season, yes. But again, that's in your heart. And uh, I can shake my head, I can say amen, I can do whatever, but whatever's in my heart is who I am and what I'm thinking. All right, and for you guys, did you do the 24 minute rule on this one to, to just put it away, this loss to North Dakota State? Is it something you can come back to later? Or is it one that you have to dwell on a little bit right now and, and correct some things? Uh, we're going to correct it on film, and uh, once we correct it on film, we use the term play in the present, live in the present, and focus on the task at hand. The, football forces you to do that. If you're going to be a good football player, you can't think about the past because you have, you have three short days to get ready for the next test, which is a football game. 28-7 final, Hank. Uh...
wrap this thing up before everybody moves on to Indiana State. Well, I'll just say, you know, it's a long season. And throughout this season, there are going to be ups and downs, no doubt about that. And every team's going to have a week or, or a game that maybe they don't play their best. Well, this just happened to, ha to be that week against one of the best teams in the country. And this scoreboard, that's the result of what happens when you don't play your best against a team like that. And maybe a chance later on to see uh, the Bison again. Up next, we will go to the board. We'll take a look at how Dallas, uh, Dallas Goddard gets loose for that jacker of the touchdown and how the Bison stuffed up the running game at the line of scrimmage. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Let's go to the board and we're going to take a look at two things. First of all, the North Dakota State defense against the SDSU running game. Hank, this looks like any other team lining up to play defense. What do they do? Do they do anything different, or do they just do it better than other teams to stop the Jackrabbit run? Well, they, they don't do a whole lot any differently than, uh, than your base 4-3 defense, no. Uh, but what they do do is, is everything very well. And what they've got is seven guys, um, seven tough guys, yes. we'll just call them that, that, that are really good at what they do. And uh, in particular with this linebacking core, I think a big, a big piece of this is familiarity between the two sides. Um, given a, a certain down and distance and a certain formation, a certain personnel for SDSU, these guys are thinking run, right? And, and, and another thing about NDSU's defense is that they're very confident um, in their secondary's ability to match up with the guys on the perimeter. Yeah. So that gives these guys a whole lot of confidence in the run game. They're saying, okay, against 12 personnel um, on first and 10, we know that 70 to 80% of the time, these guys are gonna run the football. And we're confident with our matchups on the outside. So uh, these guys are saying, if I read run, I'm not hesitating. And that's what you see consistently yeah. on film. If these guys aren't winning one-on-one -on -one matchups, this guy's probably taking up two people. And as soon as this guy or that guy reads run, they come screaming through their assigned gap without any hesitation. And when, and when you can play that aggressively against the run, um, good things can happen. Yeah, we saw that a lot going on Tangway, two on one here. Fullback might get a linebacker, but one of them is running free to get to the running back. That's what happened, right? Often. It really is. And I think uh, when, what we saw a whole lot of last Saturday um, was perhaps a, 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 f a physical type of defense that the Jackrabbits either A, aren't familiar with, or B, weren't prepared for. And, you know, these guys, you know, a lot of these guys, sure, there's some new bodies up front for SDSU, but they've been up to Fargo, most of those yeah. guys, and they, they know what they're getting into against these guys. Um, so uh, you saw a, a heightened sense of intensity on one side of the ball and not on the other. And, we, and Stig said this many times, we had blockers there, we just let them go right by us. Right by us. That's what happened in this game. Unfortunately. Right. One time the Jacks did get it right. This was in the third quarter. They finally get it walled off here on this touchdown to Dallas Goddard. Everybody does their job. Uh, Dallas Goddard's out here. Wenicke's lined up on the right side. The safety's kind of taking a peek over here. This linebacker comes, but the Jacks pick it up. What happens on this touchdown to Dallas Goddard? Uh, well, really, just, just quality execution. Um, uh, like you said, they're able to pick up the blitz. Uh, coming out of the huddle, what they did, uh, actually Goddard was, he was either flexed right here or he was even in the backfield, I don't recall, but he eventually motions out of the backfield, yep. away from the formation, and they're able to ID that they've got one-on-one -on -one over here uh, with a safety, because the corner had flipped wide receiver here with Winicky here. Um, this is straight up 11, you got a free safety over the top, cover 11, man-to-man -man on the outside, and uh, they were bringing somebody. But Max Protect up front, um, you've got the back to help you out in pass pro. Uh, Luan at, at pre-snap, he's saying, I've got my big athletic tight end one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a much shorter corner, uh, excuse me, much shorter safety, and I'm going to take my chance over there. You can see uh, Zach releases the ball before Goddard even knows. Yep. He's still uh, making his break trying to get around the safety and makes a heck of a catch and gets himself into the end zone. Yeah, Dallas Goddard is six foot five. Kyle Paris comes up here and makes that block on the linebacker, and Goddard just gets inside here and goes. Here's Coach Stig on how this uh, play worked for the Jacks. We traded and then we motioned Dallas out, so we know we have their corners flipped and we're going to get Dallas Goddard out on a safety. Uh, we're just running a simple uh, guy to the flat, uh, Dallas is up the sidelines, and just looking for if they're in zone, the levels, and if not, what's the best throw. And, and, and you'll see the contact you're talking about here. Well, all, all game. It doesn't matter who the player is. Uh, it's all game. 
and uh, it, it, it's judgment call, but the, the officials have to call it if they see it. This is a, this is a safety. You can see him kind of hold him up, draped over him. Dallas is a big guy. He's an athletic guy. Again, a little bit of a hybrid and has great hands, so uh, good play on his part. Apparently big hands, too, that he can... Well, Take it in like he, he is a, a, a gifted guy. You know, he, he grew up in Britain, South Dakota, so he didn't do a lot of this stuff on the football field. Uh, but we're, we're getting our money's worth out of him. He's a good football player. When we come back, taking a look at Indiana State as the Sycamores come to Brookings on Saturday. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. The Bison game is done. We're moving on to Indiana State, and the Sycamores won at Missouri State on Saturday, 56-28. to Quarterback Matt Adam is a sophomore. He is the Missouri Valley Offensive Player of the Week. He had four touchdowns and 265 yards through the air. Indiana State, like South Dakota State, has been a program on the rise in the last three seasons. Coach Sanford comes in and really, I think they're over his first year. They had some adversity within the team, comes back, makes the playoffs last year. So uh, they funded it better. They're, they're taking care of some of the facilities stuff, giving him a chance, and he's, he's got a bunch of good coaches. All right, you, you really never know what to expect, but there's the saying, don't turn one loss into two losses. Steg is going to grind that home all week. But is it going to be more about the Jackrabbits' frame of mind going into this game? Definitely. Uh, these guys have, have got to refocus. they got to, they got to forget about what happened last Saturday, and they've got to understand that last Saturday wasn't a playoff game. It's just the beginning of conference play in the Missouri Valley. There's a whole lot of football yet to play. So strap it up, fellas, because the Sycamores are coming to town. They're going to be ready to play. And the sooner you can get over that bison loss, the better off you're going to be. All right, Jackson, still in the top 10. Indiana State is in that top 25 as well. We've got the game live on Saturday from Coughlin Alumni Stadium, kicking it off at 6 o'clock with Hank and I. We will see you there. See you next week on Jack Turner.